Right, joke of the day. My girlfriend keeps putting glue on my antique weapons. She denies it, but I'm sticking to my guns. Right, okay, mint. Okay, what if I told you Shinto, the native religion of Japan, was maybe not real? Or what if I told you that Shinto, the native religion of Japan, was just maybe made up? Right, going to be a video clicked in the link pinned link yeah and it's to a channel called Tadagenji or Samurai Traditions of the Tadagenji by Nojiri Stephen Nojiri now he's just done a video it's 47 minutes long but it's his theory that actually Shinto is a modern creation and by modern he means like post-medieval pre-modern and that it's literally and the dog is snoring by the way so if you're going to comment on the video and say who's snoring it's my dog um is that the wife snoring or the dog so um basically this is his theory and i want you to mess to a watch his video but also have a have a talk here especially for those who are really knowledgeable in japanese history what do you think i'm gonna say i don't know but it's a lovely theory and i like the idea of deconstructing things like this and he does point out very rightly that you can't backtrack history you can't have something and then bring in, put the parts in which is what happens with ninjutsu. You have to start, like all good historians, with the evidence at the beginning and follow the evolution of it and then project backwards and forwards from there. Okay, so the Japanese, you, you may be aware, you know what Buddhism is, yeah? The teachings of the Buddha and how to become enlightened. Confucianism is the teachings of Confucius and how to work in society, yep? Taoism is the teachings of the way, yep? And Shinto is the teachings of the gods. Now, Stephen is saying, he's saying, hold on a minute. When you look at the, the history of Japan, there's almost no evidence for Shinto. It only appears much later, the evidence for Shinto. Not the word, the organised religion. So this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated. So let's imagine Christianity, yeah? So Christianity starts with Jesus Christ. No matter what derivative that even islam is a part of christian teachings but you start to get a bit complicated because you say well jesus is a jew and he didn't make christianity he was literally i'm jewish and this is the new testament for jews and the jews were like nope not having it and some of them were like yep we're having that That's the, we are christians we follow christ but it's still a jewish religion but my point here is that even though the different sections of Christianity, they clearly have a single idea. And that is there is one God called Jesus Christ. It's from the Abrahamic tradition and he is the God and there is a heaven. And off you go. We're all got harps and halos. Have you noticed that angels have halos in the old days, but only saints should have halos? Or is that, am I wrong? Let me know. So can we say that Shinto is a single identifiable religion? The problem here comes, and this is not one of those weird, crazy theories, genuine, full-on academics will say that just because it's pre-Buddhist and just because it's Japanese, it does not automatically make it Shinto. What a lot of people do is they go, oh, look at this folk tradition I found in Japan. Is it Buddhism? No. Is it Confucianism? No. Must be Shinto. And they ditch it into Shinto. There you go. The Shinto bucket, I'm going to call it, right? And loads of, like, academics... Well, I say loads. The ones I've read are like, we should stop doing this just because we find it before Buddhism. So, here's the thing for you. Buddhism entered Japan a long time ago. So, the same time the Anglo-Saxons were forging the kingdoms of England and they were, you know, taking over the Celts, who would have been Romanicized, if that's the correct word, um... And they were literally coming out of Rome, you know, the the um, the control of Rome. Around the same time, Buddhism starts to creep up in Japan. That's 1,500 years ago, roughly, roughly. So when the Anglo-Saxons are pushing up, Buddhism is pushing up. So you could say then, Anthony, what religion was in Japan before Buddhism? Well, we do know that there has always been trade between China and Japan. There's always been movement. So, sorry... This idea that when, when we say, hold on, Japan is isolated and it suddenly gets some information on Buddhism and it's that. It. No, there is definitely waves of people coming from China. So this is where maybe we can get um, we can get Scott from Sengoku Studies to chime in. There's this 
period from 0 hundred to 500 roughly before buddhism comes and how much trade movement of ideas is happening scott if you've got time mate from 0 to 500 what's happening now if there's lots and if you're like yeah there's tons of stuff going on you can easily say taoism is coming across because taoism is oh i have got uh, i've wrote a book on that you know what i mean so taoism is there i think pre-christ god you're making me think you stretch so it's been there a long time and what stephen is saying is what we think of shinto is actually just taoism and there's some of that strikes out here. And the idea that strikes out is you do go to Japan, you go, we've got Confucianism there, Neo-Confucianism. We've got Buddhism, all the different sects. And we've got um, Shinto. And you're like, in China, we've got Confucianism, Buddhism and Taoism. Yeah. Maybe Taoism and Shinto are the same thing. Now, Stephen comes up with some great examples. He says, actually, you look at anything early Shinto and it literally is Taoist rituals. It's almost the same as Taoism. So one thing that really stuck out from Stephen's video, which I absolutely adored, was he said the actual word itself, Shinto, which is an old word, means way of the gods, the Shinto way, uh, the Taoist way, the Tao. So literally it says gods and the Tao, the Tao of the gods instead of Shinto. It's actually the Tao of the gods. So he's saying this is how to follow the Tao through the gods. Now, so some questions start arising. What were the Japanese practicing before? You could literally say, is it folk religion? And Shinto uh, is just a term. And he does say the Nihonki, I think, which is there before Buddhism arrives, says Shinto, the word in it. And he's saying, if you look at the grammar, it could mean just the way of the gods. And then people have retrospectively gone back and gone, that's a good name. Let's use the word Shinto, the way of the gods, because this Shinto is full of Taoism. And there's something. So here's here's the general idea, guys, from an, going. To, let's step back. The general idea is this. Before Buddhism ever came to Japan, there was this pristine island like in a Garden of Eden that nobody went in and out of. And they just stayed there beautiful and they worshipped the rocks and the spirits. And it, they, they did something called Shinto. And then Buddhism came along and they run side by side until the early 1900s when they divided again and Shinto was pure and Buddhism was considered at the side. That is not true and it's an idealised version of what actually happened. What probably happened, again, I'm doing this just from watching Stephen's video and from my memory, is that there's waves of people coming from China over to Japan. Taoism is coming across. It's mixing with folk traditions now folk traditions we have to clarify this isn't one single folk tradition band this is everybody everywhere i use the bones for this oh, whoa, 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 whoa. you know well i look at the stars well i'm looking at the clouds and i follow the thunder god well i follow the sun god yeah and i follow the river god <coughs> okay and i you know and there's all that and we call it shinto but they didn't probably but the word shinto appearing in the nihon ki ki nihon ki nihon ki is actually um, probably means let's follow the Tao of the gods, whatever we have in Japan. It's not Shinto, one single religion. It's just we have the gods and we know of Taoism. Let's follow the Tao of the gods. That's what Stephen's sort of arguing. And then, so what we need is how much information about people coming across. And then from there, Buddhism and Shinto are absolutely like that. So what it might be is, but and I have seen this, whenever you read, Stephen's got a point, whenever you read anything samurai, it is Taoist. It's like their world origin view is not Buddhist. It's Taoist. Now, again, you could argue how strong they are. But nearly everything you come across is there's one thing. It divides into yin yang, divides into the five elements. The five elements manifest in the 10,000 things. And that is earth. And when you deconstruct, death comes. It reverses. It breaks down to the five elements. It goes back to yin and yang and back to the great one. Yep. Same as God says, when you die, you go back to heaven. Same as Buddhism says, you break down and you go off into your next incarnation. There's all 
I like to call it mental masturbation and it's a genuine term I've used made up because it's like people will just go all oh, finicky about this concept and then they twiggling, twiggling this. But actually, they pretty much say the same thing. But maybe that's me looking at it wrong. But most people get stuck in the middle bit of let's make it over complicated, over sophisticated because the problem is, is the world is full of very easy truths. But that doesn't satisfy most humans. They need something complex and, in, you know, and very dim I can't even get the words out. And very difficult. So what Stephen is saying is that probably from around the year 16 to 1700, people started to... And, and there is a big move. There is, he's right here that if you go to before Nobunaga, right, there's a massive Chinese influence in Japan. Tea ceremonies don't like the tea ceremonies. Architecture doesn't look like Japanese architecture. It's got garish colours. Their colours were different. Once Zen hits its fashionable limit, and once Nobunaga starts changing things, you get the Japanese aesthetic. The, and then the tea ceremony masters are massive, and they all change. And instead of ornate painted spoons with this and painted temples, I've used this sliver of bamboo. We get wabi-sabi. Yep. And that starts drifting across Japan. And that's where we start to get the stoic warrior image. And there is a distinct difference between Japan before Sengoku period and Japan after Sengoku period. It's the same place, it's the same culture, but it has massively stripped off its Chinese stuff. Maybe Scott can add to this or tell me I'm wrong, I don't know. But on the whole, that's what sort of happened. So what we find is that we get a nationalistic idea of Japan. So they close down their borders in the early 1600s. And this is the same time you start to see Shinto as a defined object. And it starts saying, OK, so Stephen is saying instead of thinking that Shinto was there before, Buddhism came, they amalgamated together and then they were tore apart in the early 1900s, late 1800s. Maybe Taoism, which seems to be really missing from the Japanese record, you know, it's there, but you, it's not as much. Omyodo is there, but maybe Shinto is actually Taoism, Japanese Taoism with a mixture of random folk beliefs from all across Japan, not a unified thing. And it is folk, and, and the Taoism there is known as the way of the gods, the Tao of the gods. And that later, when Japan was trying to give itself its own identity, separate from its Chinese cousin, the big brother, it says, well, we use the Tao of the gods. This is our traditional way. And they then create Shinto. So which makes Shinto a young religion. What do you think? If you want to help me, get yourself a copy of The Art of War or um, The Book of Ninja. Or if you're interested in this video, probably The Dark Side of Japan. Remember, click the link. See what Stephen's got to say. Let me know what you think. Make sure you comment, guys.